I've come down into the valley. We're fortunate down in this part of our property to have a spring-fed creek that provides water all year round. Doesn't seem to matter how dry it gets. Down here it's always wet. I bogged the tractor down here just the other day. Foolishly thinking that, oh well, the creek will be dry enough now, I'll be able to get through here. <laughs> nope. It's full of water. There are frogs down here, slugs, snails, mosquitoes. These willow trees are actually weeds. They're thriving here. You can probably hear the crickets. We are planting trees down in this area. We're wanting to regenerate it so it becomes habitat for wildlife. Habitat is still on the decline in farming areas. We're also wanting to plant trees here to act as natural filters to stop large amounts of sediment from draining through these creeks into the Great Lakes down in South Gippsland. Life is full of connected systems, all of them impacting each other in so often way, ways that are imperceptible to us. Just because we can't see it, or just because we don't know about it, doesn't mean it isn't happening. All of it works together in this beautiful, collective, immensely powerful will to live. And human beings, no matter what their cognitive condition, no matter what their relational situation, are part of this amazing web of the will to live that gives rise in all of us to the reverence for life that gives rise to the question, the deeply spiritual question that comes from our core as people connected to the will to live. Who am I? Where am I? Why am I here? What does it mean? And even when I have no cognitive ability to grapple or retain the answers, grapple with or retain the answers to those questions, I am still in the midst of it part of it, an expression of it, and connected to it by virtue of the fact that I'm alive and I'm sensing. And so spiritual care has so much of a role to play in the midst of the process of aging that includes cognitive decline, differing cognitive abilities. I'm going to keep walking and see if we can find one of these trees. You can see the wetlands. You probably can't see the trees at the moment. Let's see if I can find one. It's so very wet in here. If it wasn't for the amount of grass, I'd be sinking up to my ankles already. Here we go. Can you see it? This is a little gum tree planted by us on the weekend. We were worried about planting because we thought, oh, it's just so dry everywhere. They won't survive. But right here, as I said, it's so wet and these trees love wet feet. Give it another six months and this tree will be as tall as me. This is its natural environment. This is where it wants to live. 
this is where its very physiological nature is designed to live. It has evolved so beautifully to, a, to have been adapted to these situations. It's another example of the will to live, of the great presence of creative spirit in all living things that is pre-conscious. This creature doesn't have a cognitive brain like we do. All of its processes are embodied in its cellular physiology. It is spirit. <laughs>